is the work of the gospel. And it's now that we are charged to engage, to receive, and to offer. God, by your grace, enable us to proceed in that way that you do here. Well, there's the divine hand.
Psalm 30, verse 11 and 12. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Over the years, we've had uh, the opportunity to have fuller 
students, our graduates, come and work with hundreds of adults who are in distress, families in crisis, and kids who have a developmental disarray. And they, through their training experience, first of all, they bring amazing integrity and this capacity for sacrifice. And then through their training, they bring out these divine capacities for communion, for connection, for co-creativity with their clients, so that we, we see restoration to a, to a place of shalom in their lives. I, I thought of one family in particular that we're still working with, where we're just taken aback by the, the dramatic nature of the transformation and restoration in them. A uh, highly professional couple, international couple, brought their 16-year-old to be uh, assessed for our developmental treatment. And they took one look and turned around and left because they, they had no way to get him like, from the car to our office house. Uh, he's anxious and prone to seizures and they just, they just gave up. I went to see him and what I saw at his home was this large teenager who couldn't interact, couldn't converse, couldn't express himself, and was just kind of looking around the edges of family life. And what his parents have learned through a relationship-based approach, they've said, has completely transformed their family. He's been having years, years since childhood, about 40 hours a week of rewards and consequences for compliance, kind of a behavioral approach, but it didn't, it didn't bring out his personhood. Um, so, using a relationship-based approach that we, we teach parents, they were able to see that their son had potential, and their other child too, um, that, that if they could see what was inside of him, a thinking and a feeling person, um, they could have a relationship with him, and he could grow, and, and he's just completely different now. It's completely, he just celebrated his 19th birthday by inviting his new friends in our team group to have a party. He initiated the ideas, he's making social plans, he's texting his therapist when he needs support, he's um, talking about specific particular girls he's interested in, and making plans for community college, and even able to talk about his fears about leaving the familiarity of high school. So he's, he's completely different. Parents are, are unrecognizable in the way that they think about the parenting. And he's been restored to the, the common family of humanity. When I was a student at Fuller, I took a course from one of the very first graduates of the School of Psychology, Dr. Walter Becker. And as a part of that course, we formed small groups out of which community was supposed to come. And I happened to be in the group with Dr. Becker. And in that group, our community was so strong that what grew out of that was the desire to have work together based on our common faith and community. And we then established what is now the Levine Christian Counseling Center back in 1980. Our mission was to provide affordable counseling to the community, to raise up the next generation of Christian therapists, and to provide education and training to everyone from a Christian psychological and we estimate now, since 1980, that we've touched the lives of somewhere between five and six million people in several countries around the world. Ours is a relational approach based on the way Jesus had relationships with others, and we're most aligned with the relational school of psychoanalysis today. You know, the example that comes to my mind is a young man who came to us for a therapy who's not a Christian, and most people come to us uh, because we're a Christian young citizen, as Christians, but he didn't. Both of his parents, though, were graduates of Fuller's School of Theology. Now, this, this young man was quite angry. He was angry at both of his parents, angry at the children. He was so angry at his parents that he had refused to let them know where he even lived for 16 years. And our approach with a patient like this is not to begin an intercession with prayer, not to quote scripture to him, and not to refer to Christian principles. But in every session that I had with this young man, over my right shoulder, was my diploma from the School of Psychology at Fuller. And over my left shoulder was my diploma from the School of Theology at Fuller. And I believe the Holy Spirit was working silently in the background in every single session. 
And as a result of our work together, after about two and a half years, quite on his own, he decided that he wanted to restore his relationship with his father and his mother. And he called them, and for the first time in well over 16 years, they had, they had the beginning of a relationship that was beginning to be restored. Now, the Old Testament ends with a warning for this. We're told that unless the hearts of parents are restored to their children, and the hearts of children are restored to their parents, the land will result in destruction. And we take that verse quite literally at the Levine Council Center. And it's our goal to come alongside people and restore their hearts to their parents, and restore parents' hearts to their children, because if they don't, their lives certainly will have destruction in them. I thank God that I received the training that I did at Fuller School of Psychology so that I can work with the relational men that I work, as I believe Jesus worked with people when he was here too.
eyes and redeemed our lives, turning our mourning into dancing and our sorrow into joy. So go now, proclaim the hope of the gospel and do the work of the kingdom. Leave here with a firm commitment to support the ministry of the School of Psychology that it may honor our God in the decades to come. Go with a faithfulness to God that reflects God's faithfulness to all of God's people. Shall we stand for that picture? It's just after the text when Jesus has this amazing encounter with the woman and heals Jairus' daughter, that then he sends his disciples out in the God was able to do exceedingly abundantly, beyond anything that we could ask or even imagine, according to the power that is within us, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, in the school of psychology, in Fuller Theological Center, both now and